Character progression is a natural side effect of playing through any MMO, being many times the best thing about the whole damn genre. But in Final Fantasy XIV, unlocking the capabilities of your class is outstanding. In my recent time playing in this game, I went from a casual marauder guild member to an axe-wielding beast. And no, literally, that's like what all the skills are related to. It's about being the beast in the beast gauge. Well, it has been absolutely satisfying unlocking this portion of my class. And and here's what happened. So we pick up our journey in Final Fantasy 14 at the Marauder Skill. One thing I did not do in my previous video was the job specific quests. Hold up. This is very important because it makes sure that I have unlocked all the abilities that I should have for my class on top of actually allowing me to unlock the job specific warrior class, which is kind of like an upgraded class. Well, I go ahead and talk to the Axe Master only to find out that the foul mouthed English boy who I saved at the crab rave, that was a weird sentence. Well, it turns out that he ran off to avenge his parents. Now in my haste through that backstory, it turns out that his parents were murdered by something the Kujata, but in my mind, I've already auto-corrected it to be the Kaiju. So, well, the Kaiju killed his parents, and then he ran off to play Pacific Rim. So we talked to the Axe Master's sister, Sulkweb, on how we should proceed. And actually, I think she's basically like a pocket healer, which is very convenient. We need to traverse to the Red Rooster Stead, which is in the middle of Bumble Nowhere. There's like nothing nearby to easily teleport to. So I decided to play some gentle music while we travel. Country road. I arrive at the Red Rooster Stead after being tracked down by Galactic. Literally, he's like a heat seeker. Well, we question Nedart, and through careful deciphering of his old timey English, like, good God, I had no idea that a sentence could have this many apostrophes. <laughs> the kid had run off to hunt down the monster over by Aleport. Galactic is generally displeased that I am taking so long, but now Salk says that her guard friend is near that town and may know something about what happened. All right, I just got to point this out. What the hell is his name? Is it? It's probably Farstim, but I, I'm thinking Fartstim. His name is Fartstim. <laughs> oh man. Well, he saw the kid and let him run off. So we go scavenge hunt for all the clothes, bags, maybe a body. I don't know. At this point, we're just foreshadowing. Well, we gather some of these things only to find out that this absolute Chad is challenging a 10,000 pound bull minotaur with a damn stick. Like, Unrelated, though, this monster honestly just looks like Don Fan from the Pokemon universe. Just throw, throw, throw an Ultra Ball and call it a day. But the Kaiju uses a super effective earthquake and the kid gets launched like 30 feet face first onto the ground. But uh, unfortunately, he's protected by plot armor. Then in a twist of event, there are jackals waiting right there at the very bottom. Like legit right where he landed <laughs> i need to show you a before and after i'm calling bs here where the hell did these angry raptor kittens show up from make it make sense to me well sigard looks up as we sprint towards him and we see him whisper caffeinated i kind of lost it here like he got catapulted off of a cliff and the first thing he asked for is a cup of coffee <laughs> like what a chad me and silkweb cruise through a few packs of these jackals like no problem but then comes another program cutscene where we're being overwhelmed oh my goodness that's some Bull crap. Well, Wern Zone shows up and straight up KOs the competition, but like, I totally had it under control. I mean, these angry Pokemon, we, we had them. Well, Don Fan from a distance watches us run away to the Red Rooster Stead, which the Axe Master said, follow my stead. Nope, guess I gotta run this whole ass distance because he made it sound like I was gonna go with him. No, I just, I got left there and everyone ran off. So, well, another huff and Nedard thanks us for saving his grandkid and Warren Zoan is sad. And then Galactic walks in only to watch me teleport away. Bye. Am I a joke to you? I finish the quest and then accept a new one called Bleeder of the Pack, where I need to test my might against a terrible trial. Like, okay, maybe finally some action, challenging action. Also, Galactic has moved on to core exercises this week. Gotta stay in shape, gotta get them gains. Well, we arrive in the Salt Strand with Salt Web, only to see this wizard fall from the sky. Like, no explanations, just like... <laughs> flat on the ground nothing but a flying corpse so i do the only thing reasonable and dance on their corpse so here comes the trial and me and salt get attacked by a bunch of moles which seems kind of like a 
lazy trial or like they could have done something a little bit better but this is immediately followed by the worst possible meme that i have seen in a very long time first off how the hell did he get up there second oh my goodness who could that be i immediately identify the axe like i started uh, circling it like this is terrible well my salt bee says literally oh brother hmm foreshadowing who could that be <laughs> All these able-bodied ambushers come running out of the salt, and I'm like, I'm swinging my axe with such ferocity, like, we we know who this is, right? Like, we know that these are members of the Marauders Guild, and I, like, purged 20 of them. They were weak, and they didn't deserve the rank. Well, then, out comes a familiar Marauder. Hmm, who has a giant spicy battle axe in blue armor? Who could it be? <laughs> Well, this fight is actually super easy, and he goes down. Sulk asks me not to tell anyone about this because it's kind of embarrassing, which I agree. I leave the instance to only to see Galactic nuking every mob in a three-quarter mile radius. Just a death cat sprinting around, exploding darkness. Well, <laughs> anyway, we get back to the Marauder's Guild, and I get to choose a piece of gear for completing my trial. And I see this heavy iron armor, which is a massive defensive upgrade. Look at all that armor. But the problem is the reason that it's such a defensive upgrade is because it doesn't allow you to wear a helmet with this chest piece. So you basically become a giant tin can and you cannot move your neck. <laughs> like what the hell is this? Oh my God. I didn't realize that this armor was gonna turn me into a damn owl that can't turn his head because of the armor. Like this was so funny. <laughs> I love it. And it is also funny is because there's no expression. There's nothing. There's nothing going on in there. Well, I get back to the Red Rooster Stead to check in with our angry English boy. And I'm going to read you a bit of this dialogue. And I want to see you the response that my Marauder gives me. He's like, yeah, I know you can beat that bastard. You got to. Galactic impatiently waits for me to finish my shenanigans as I talk to Bronebar and Salk. But like their movements are, are really awkward right here Brone bar stands a little too close for me and then salt stands way too close hey how you doing love mama let me whisper in your ear well we follow a trail of destruction brought on by our elephant pokemon to have this giant ass climactic battle which starts with us finding this overturned wayne which i honestly when i was reading this i thought it was like that that was someone's name like there was a guy who was overturned and his name was wayne i blame this game uh you know i was disappointed to just see a cart <laughs> my marauder inspects the cart and in the distance at the trailhead appears this overgrown dumbo the expression of absolutely nothing rolls across my marauder's face <laughs> there's not a single thought in there nothing it's just we got this climactic battle and it's actually pretty good. I get to pop Berserk and lay down some overpowers to crush the big boy. Broseiden takes on the ads for me while I work the big and down. My Marauder, I know, is looking forward, looking right at the monster that he just slew. But because he ain't got no neck, he keeps at, he keeps heaving like he's about to just puke everywhere. Sighard shows up to see that the kaiju that killed his parents, and I swear the stash is sitting here saying, Oh, uh, he was like this when I found him. Sighard is so sad and states that I actually did it, caffeinated actually did it. The boy sees this and now wants to train to be a marauder as well. I talk with the team, which is, is actually really funny is because they say like one phrase and then phase away. <laughs> like, bye, <laughs> see you later, nerd. We get back to the Marauders Guild for a celebration of my triumphant return. And a Warren Zone is sad because no, no, there's nothing left for him to teach me. Caffeinated dad. What do you want to be when you grow up? We continue on our story into the chamber to see Merle Webb, and I think it is Merle Webb? Because someone told me that this is like Germanic inspiration, where Y's sound like V's. Because uh, that makes it easier for me to understand, you, you jerks. <laughs> well, she's going on about how great the company is and why we have to keep fighting, and then these two Keebler elves show up and start chit-chatting with me, honestly. Did you look as the Admiral bid you? It is a rather stirring standard, I must say. Like, I don't know who this voice actor is, but I immediately hate the smug voice. I, I know this is probably going to piss someone off because that's probably their favorite character in the series. I, I like as soon as he starts talking, I was I immediately said I was like, what an ass. <laughs> well, the twins introduce themselves to me and they already seem to dislike me, but like good. You can't see any emotion into this armor, buddy boy. Like straight up, I'm ignoring everything they're saying. I'm not even making eye contact. I know that his character head model is turned to face the kids, but there is no expression. He is facing away, just 
It's perfect. Well, now we go to see our girl Connie in the woods to hear what the twin adders have to say. And I will say I like this bit of an explanation where we get to learn a little bit more about the city states that we are a part of and how they came to be and who these people are. And then guess who interrupts my educational seminar? God, I'm trying to listen and get some education from my girl Connie, but no, you got to talk about history and stuff like that. Also, I learned that the humans in this game are basically called Cure not higher. So I did gain a little bit of a factoid there. These stories are hinting at probably what I will have to go and do if I choose the specific city companies to follow. Basically a, a foreshadow of who will have to combat, why we have to combat them, and basically why it's important. There it does seem to be a reoccurring factor, a main factor here, and that is with the empire, the Garlean empire, which honestly the first time that I heard this, it made me think of garlic bread. So in my opinion, they're the garlic bread empire. <laughs> Just Enjoy my hell, folks. As I'm listening, Santa's elves are hinting at what I will have to deal with as far as the primals and beast tribes uh, that worship them. Okay, I get it. I got to deal with the Beastie Boys first before I can ride off into the sunset. I come out in Galactic and I have a seat in the rain. I'm also glad that he decided that he didn't need to do any more sit-ups. Because honestly, I don't need an overpowered cat chasing me down everywhere I go. I arrive at last in Ulda again to listen to the angry wife beater guy. And who is this lady? Oh, she looks fancy. He goes on about how the prosperous desert can be and why we need to support Ulda. Like, dude, I just killed a fire god for you like two days ago. Can you just chill? And guess who ruins my peace? Here we go, talking about flags again. It's me. I am trying to listen to the speech at hand. Shouldn't you be, like, looking for the hobbits in Isengard? Anyway, Raubon picks up this La La Fell, who appears to be the Sultana? I, am, I may get that wrong. Like, the big queen of this place. I mean, that's awesome, uh, especially as Raubon is now a walking chair, but also I got to give him like mad props because I want to guess that the average Lalafell weighs like what, 50 pounds? And he's basically doing a T-raise out to one side with no clear counterweight for like five minutes straight. Mad respect for the workout. Give it that. Oh, anyway, so Aquanaut is talking to me and Kafdad is just miles away right now. But it seems that I have to head back to Menphilia the Minor. And yes, I read the comments for the reason that she's the leader of the Scions is because she has the Echo. She's not a fighter. She is a Minor. Which honestly, you think that she would still have different apparel on. But that's just, it's just me. <laughs> I get a little cutscene of the two angry elf twins. And they're discussing why the Grand Companies are bad. And they drop this line. Wait a second. I've seen that white hair and elf ears before. Are these Louis Swaz grandkids? Ooh, plot twist. I may be wrong on that, but I am paying attention to these little things. I think I can put that together. I think those are Louis Swass grandkids. I talk to the grand companies and hear what they have to say, but it's, it's, all it is is just like this meme. Nice to meet you, Peter Tensio. All right. Nice to meet you. Jerome Smith. Come on, bro. What's up, fam? <laughs> That's all I was thinking about this entire time. Well, now I go to the Maelstrom command to get sworn in, but oh my god, another crisis before I'm officially a Maelstrom recruit. But this personnel officer straight up asks me to help, but look at this text. This is highly irregular. <laughs> Dad, help please. Dad, come on. Well, he pans to my marauder to see his reply. So anyway, I go to Cedarwood again, and it seems like the Garleans are tracking down this engineer, but I like run full sprint in a massive metal tin can, and like nobody hears me, I guess. This, and this engineer we go to arrive and speak to, he doesn't trust me, so he goes to pick a fight with me. Try me, bitch. Well, luckily some storm soldiers vouch for me, and, and we are good to go, but... Basically, this ship represents years of research that the evil Darth Vader tribute band wants back. Well, we all charge in because there's a Lala Fell engineer who didn't get off in time. And well, we slice down all the soldiers only to fight a giant mech. Like, I was not expecting that. This got spicy real quick. Luckily, there's like no issue with the fight and the engineers are saved. I get the clearance to head back to Limsa and I, I get probably the best line of text thus far. Thanks, dad. <laughs> the personnel officer swears us in with his entourage and we swear the oath. I get to choose the best answer, but given my armor, he wanted to swear an oath and he couldn't speak through the armor. There's nothing. And they're like, oh, the strong silent type. No, he's screaming in there. You just can't hear shit. <laughs> well, on stream, I get the Chocobo quest ready to tackle a portion of the main story scenario because apparently I can get the beginner mount now, but I needed to get some storm tickets. So here we go. Also fun note, the soldiers now call me private dad. <laughs> 
It just gets worse. I get this quest to go check out the PvP area of Crystalline Conflict, which is located on the Wolf Den Island. But this is actually just a simple go and talk quest. Easy peasy, no problem. And now I get to unlock my mount. I also have to talk about the sprint animation in this game because with this armor, he forces his head down. And while he's sprinting with his weapon out, he looks... It's, it's just straight bull rush. Like, he is straight Kool-Aid man in it through a wall. Like, what the hell? I was, I was cracking up. So I get my bird and this lady literally is wearing a chocobo mask. Like she, she's really committed to the job. Kind of reminds me of like a burger mascot at a burger joint. Like there's like a 17 year old kid in there and it's like, I hate my life. Then my character stares off into nothing. And I get to name my bird. But I offer you this little clip of an explanation of my L chocobo's name of Lil Espresso. My daughter is very enthralled with uh, YouTube and watching me do all this stuff. And like, she likes watching my videos and my streams and stuff like that. Um, uh, some of the more, you know, regular viewers of my channel will know that I've talked about her so much. So, and I keep it right here because I think it's adorable. My daughter went ahead and made a, she drew my oldest daughter drew my logo and caffeinated dad gaming for a school project. That's how excited she was for, for me doing all of this. And she's so excited that she wants to actually create her own YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel that she wants to do, um, is, or when she wants to put her name is, and I'm quoting, Lil Espresso, L-I-L Espresso. Um, and she's so, just so excited to, and, and I'm, I'm pumped for it. Like, honestly, uh, once we actually get her to focus, um, I'm very excited for it. It's, uh, uh, it's like one of those things where... It, I didn't realize the effect that I was having on her because she talks, apparently she talks to like people in her school and she's like, oh, my dad's, my dad's a famous YouTuber. And I'm like, in this meantime, I have also gathered a whole ass crowd of people who happen to be where I am in Limsa Liminsa. I come out of the cutscene and I see a dance party and Galactic is basically acting as my bodyguard for grouping. <laughs> I jump over to Ulda to visit the Scions and now there's a parade of animals that are flying and floating and claws and this is a chair. This is this is just a chair. That is a mount that can fly. It's just a chair. So I Homer Simpson my way out of the party and we get to the Waking Sands to be reintroduced to Biggs and Wedgie. And it seems like these guys risk themselves greatly to escape the Garlean Empire. Our first order of business is going to be joined by our boy Papa Meow in reverse pants. There are some sylphs who are a part of one of the beast tribes, but they seem to be kind of peaceful in their demeanor and their capabilities. So we have to find out what's going on with them and their primal. Okay, so we head off to Gridania and there's this massive mount party of all these people outside just waiting. Also, this mount right here is just straight Harambe. Like this, this dude is being kidnapped nobody's close saying anything we speak to the twin adder soldier to find out more about the sylphs and he bounces us back to some people out in the woods who know them better than us again leave a cutscene come back to a welcome rave party <laughs> so we speak to a hawthorne guy in this place to try to put together what the sylphs actually want we need to see what their traditions are and work our way in the family seems to know more than him but for an old guy he looks he looks really young, I guess. We learn that they like dancing and milk root, which does not do a damn thing, but smell terrible. Like, wh what do these even guys even look like? Well, Hawthorne says that we are good to go and to talk to the sylphs now. And I was expecting actual beasts from a beast tribe. Nope, sentient produce. Like legit, they're just flying cabbages. So now to put this all to good use, I dance to show my appreciation for aerial vegetation. And she likes me, yay! Papa Meow and Reverse Pants show up, and the sash just completely ignores everyone. Like, no hesitation, not playing anything. I don't know where my character is. Well, they ruined it for me, and now I have to go and kill some wild creatures to prove that I am their friend. I thought Gorillam was gonna be like, oh, okay, that's a gorilla. Nope, it's a giant raptor that time forgot. Look at this bugger. <laughs> oh wait, and the gnat is so much worse. This is a gnat. This is a flying nightmare. This is horse crap. Well, I figure out my mount and I run back to our floating cabbage stand while uh, the whole party is floating and walking and running all around me, waiting me for me to do something. I'm then alerted by chat that I can actually go and unlock my warrior quest because I finished the right main scenario quest. So let's go. First, we head to this place called Costa del Sol to reinforce some of the Marauder guildmates, which Chad is like, you will love this place. Well, 
This place is, of course, in the middle of nowhere, as most things are. So the giant parade is running all over Lenolska. And once we arrived at Costa de Sol, look at this massive, beautiful beach on this, like, vacation land. Good gracious, man, I want to get stationed here. Well, apparently the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been wreaking havoc in the area, and literally, that's their big problem. It's just turtles. <laughs> the hell is this, guys? Like, I, it's a turtle. <laughs> I go up and talk to this Rogadin called Fell Demon, and look at this dude. Full on rage monkey and screaming. Well, he summons a bunch of angry turtles, I think. He may be cosplaying as Master Splinter here. <laughs> Probably. So, here goes my Marauder killing again. We take on this entire endangered species and end up killing most of them. And then this absolute unit comes back to fight some turtles, and we get to see his name. Curious Gorge. Bro, I'm out, man. Curious fucking Gorge. I hate this game. I hate this game so damn much. I need to talk to Yoshi P about this because this is ridiculous. Like, he probably paid someone a lot of money to come up with that name, Curious Gorge. Oh, my God. Well... <laughs> <laughs> we finish up the turtles and he is literally aware of how ridiculous his name is and he threatens us if we laugh at it <laughs> too late for that buddy well then i try to read this pirate voice line so enjoy all right hold on we gotta i'm gonna i'm gonna try to read this from the guild you say well blow me down and call me boogie so stupid uh, and you told me sooner i'd introduce her myself with proper respect I hate myself a little bit. Well, he says he would teach us because we had the strength of 10 men. And for us to unlock the warrior, we have to go stand under a waterfall, which honestly is kind of romantic. I really didn't think that is what he was curious about. We could have met anywhere else. Just saying. He hands me the soul of a warrior quest. And Tyler Chambers congratulates me by saying, Welcome to Warrior, the job that is too angry to die. Noise. Well, I figure out my job stone, and it seems that the beast gauge charges as I'm landing blows and attacks, so this is pretty cool. I ended up seeing some of the warrior skills, and I will eventually be able to unlock more as I play. Pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and review this leg of the journey. This chapter has absolutely been nothing but my marauder ascending into warriorhood or rising to warrior dumb. I don't, I don't like that either. But the big thing is that I've gotten to see some of the developments of my previous class related quests and how they influence my rising power over time. It's awesome to catch up with Sighard and see his personal development, especially given that I kind of missed that introduction quest because I accidentally spammed it too quickly. But then taking on the wild Pokemon Buffalo Bill, it was actually a really nice apex, we'll say, a very nice apex quest chain for the Marauder. I will admit, to unlock the Warrior, I was expecting a little bit more, a little bit more depth, and maybe a couple more quests, training things, perhaps? We essentially went to a beach vacation, talked to a turtle doobie, and became a warrior. Now, I will say that this is only probably the beginning part of the journey, and I will more likely not have more warrior quest lines moving forward, but to unlock that, it felt kind of fast, in my opinion. Also, again, why do we have to meet under the waterfall? The main scenario quest is actually pretty cool, choosing the city-state to represent, to Kind of reminds me of Guild Wars 2 in a sense where we had to choose between the Priory, Order of Whispers, or the Vigil. Although it seems like there's more of a big focus of the story, whereas I felt in Guild Wars 2 that the Orders were less intensive, I suppose. Maybe it's because I'm paying attention now? I don't know. My first stream for Final Fantasy XIV had an incredibly large crowd following me, and it just shows you in my mind, how much people love this game and how dedicated they are to it. I'm excited to see more of this story and to continue my journey through Eorzea. Now, if you did miss the last episode where I fought a fire god at like, I don't know, like level 10, <laughs> click this video here. Otherwise, stay caffeinated, folks.